Without further ado, please give a round of applause for Tamara. Thanks, Sam. Um, I'm pretty loud, so I'm gonna test this. Do you guys want the mic or no? Yeah. Okay, well, whoa. Okay, we'll stick with the mic. Um, so, uh, as Sam mentioned, my name's Tamar. I'm the California Regional Director for uh, BDS Analytics. We have Heather right over here, Heather Fife. She manages SoCal for us. Raise your hand, Heather. If you guys have questions about SoCal, come talk to her. Um, so, uh, as Sam mentioned, we are uh, the leaders in cannabis business intelligence, um, which it says up there, so it's obviously true. And um, today I am going to present to you um, on some interesting trends in the cannabis industry and how this is relevant to um, operators is they use this data to make decisions, right? So whether you're a cultivator, manufacturer, producer, or dispensary, this data helps you make data, data decisions in your business operation. So um, I have a clicker. Yeah, it works. Okay, so just a quick overview of who we are or how we get our data. We have two major sources of data. Uh, as Sam mentioned, the point of sale data is our major source of um, uh, a major source of data. We collect that from, uh, we partner directly with the dispensaries. They're, they give us a transactional sales and we give them to a market in return so that they can understand exactly what is selling and how their store is benchmarking versus the industry. And then, of course, brands like Kiva, Corova, etc., they purchase the data to understand their share of the industry, what kind of products to make, how to price them, etc. So um, that's the point of sale data. Um, we layer that. Hang on. Okay. Um, we layer that with our uh, consumer research data. That's just your traditional consumer surveys. We survey a thousand people in each state that we're in, and that provides us with the demographics, behavior graphics, psychographics, right? Who's buying, why, where, um, and how are they consuming? And those two together, sorry, I'm clicking over here, but that's not where my computer is. Um, <laughs> so those two together provide you with um, uh, industry insights. Oh, sorry, bear with me, because the clicker situation is See if it works over here. Um, and this is awkward, sorry about that. Um, so we're able to answer questions like, how big is the market? What kind of products are consumers buying? How do people feel about cannabis? Who are the current and future cannabis consumers? Where, how, and why are they consuming? What do the consumers expect out of their shopping experience? And so much more. And we will be answering a lot of those questions now. I'm gonna try this. Perfect. All right, so how big is the market? I'm sure we're all wondering that. Um, so this is a, uh, we have John over here from ArcView. Uh, we do co-publish reports with ArcView, so we take um, all the data sources that I mentioned or mentioned before, and we publish the State of the Legal Marijuana Market book with ArcView, um, and this is from that publication. So total U.S. legal cannabis retail sales, we're looking at um, roughly six billion in 2016. We'll be publishing 2017 numbers when 2017 ends. Um, <laughs> and of course, uh, we have seen, as the slide before showed, 40% um, uh, compound annual growth rate. So they're, you know, ex we're expecting that sort of um, continued growth rate, if not accelerated, and hopefully reaching or expecting the industry to reach roughly 20 or 22 uh, billion in, by 2021. Um, so, uh, the states that we're currently tracking uh, for our point of sale data and our consumer research is uh, California, Colorado, Washington, Oregon. We'll be launching Nevada and Arizona later this year or early next year. Um, and we can see from the states that we're currently tracking, California, which is just a medical market at this point, adult use hasn't even launched yet, makes up almost half of all sales in those four states. Um, so we are, of course, seeing amazing growth in uh, the other states. Uh, you can see the lines aren't, that yellow line isn't looking too pretty, but um, <laughs> I will explain, I will walk you guys through this. So um, we see, oh, you know what, I might even have, yes, okay. <laughs> so um, we see this uh, over here, this is the Colorado adult use line, and um, right when Colorado launched in, July, in January of 2014, right off the bat it made 30% of adult use of sales in that state. So the adult use market in Colorado, straight off the bat, 30% sales. Um, you see that it took about seven months to reach, hang on, hang on, okay, it took about seven months to reach parity to catch up to the medical market, and then the adult use market took off from there with roughly 30% annual um, uh, growth rate. Uh, um, so we're seeing a steady, steady adult use uh, market. Now, the medical market we see over here stayed pretty flat, and I know that's something that Californians are pretty concerned about, what's gonna happen to our medical market. 
So if we look at Colorado and Oregon, we see that both their medical markets stayed pretty flat after OW's launch. So, um, of course, you know, a lot of that depends on how the entire card holding situation is going to uh, play out in the state. But if it follows what we see in the other states, we can expect it to stay relatively flat. Um, Washington, we're going to ignore because they abolished their medical market, so it's a kind of uh, you know, awkward situation to compare to. Um, but uh, instead, we'll talk about Oregon. What's really interesting about Oregon is um, right off the bat, they could only sell um, flour. It wasn't until six months into adult use uh, launch that they were able to sell extracts and infused products. So that's what we see right over here, this spike. But then where we, where we would expect to see consistent growth, as we see in Colorado and Washington, uh, we don't. Um, anyone know why? Regulations. Regulations. Exactly. So their testing, their testing regulations were like out of control, and there was major backlog in a lot of the um, uh, in a lot of a lot of the labs. Products weren't coming to market, weren't reaching retail, and um, we just we see the market take a hit, right, and only start to pick up again earlier this year. So that's something to learn from, right? If we're if we don't want to muck up the California market like they did. Um, so now comparing California to the other three states, um, even without an adult use market yet, we can see that it dwarfs the other states. So, you know, if you expect the market to double at least or triple come early next year, this line is going to shoot way up here. <laughs> okay, um, and just an interesting split, north-south, um, uh, south makes up about 55% of revenue in the state. So what kind of products are consumers buying? Um, well, what's interesting here is that um, in the states that have already legalized adult use, we see you know, flour making up roughly half of all sales, um, and then the rest is dominated by concentrates, edibles, pre-rolls. Uh, interestingly, California is showing a very similar trend, uh, even though it's not an adult use market yet. So were there questions? I, there's a lot of slides. If you guys have questions, come to me later and I'll uh, um, and feel free to take pictures. We, we allow it. Um, so, uh, all right. So, I hear now I'm, I'm pulling Colorado data here because um, California we were only able to launch with March. Uh, the reason being a certain point of sale company went down in January and lost a lot of the industry's data. And um, we will back publish data when we add more, but um, for now, uh, March data is where we're at. Um, but for Colorado, we do have data starting with January of 2014. And so what's interesting is you're able to see the category evolution, right? So we can see that flour in Q1 of 2014 made up, which is this green bucket, made up about 70% of sales back then. Now flour makes up, as we saw in the previous slide, less than 50, right? So we're seeing that consumers migrate towards other products like concentrates and edibles and pre-rolls and tinctures, right? So their taste is evolving as well as the products. And... Um, and we should expect to see a similar evolution in California, if not a more exaggerated evolution when the adult use market comes online. Um, so looking again at uh, Colorado, and this, is, this holds true for the other adult use markets as well, we see that uh, candy and vape really dominate both of those markets. So within the um, edibles market, you see here this yellow line, that's, the, um, that's uh, adult use candy. <laughs> and same thing for this massive yellow line over here, that's adult use vape within the concentrate category. So we see those are very popular products um, for the adult use market. Uh, so now diving in a little bit and uh, looking at California versus Colorado. Um, so we see that's not ideal, but what that says is teachers, um, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so you see here within edibles, candy for Colorado, candy makes up half of sales. Um, in California, candy is um, only 33%. Candy includes the gummy category. So um, Roy did mention uh, gummies are one of the fastest growing segments, he's absolutely right. Um, so uh, what's interesting is that California, this over here is infused foods. Um, California it seems to uh, sort of dominate in infused foods versus Colorado. So that's you know your brownies and your uh, baked goods. So we should see the yellow, this one, um, that is tinctures. Tinctures for both, these are both tinctures. Sorry, yeah, not... Uh, yeah, tinctures as well is much heavier in California, but that's because I think the gummy market hasn't evolved yet. So um, when we see adult use market launch, uh, I expect that we'll see gummies grow significantly and candy will become more similar, or at least the, can the share, candy's share in edibles will approach that of, uh, of Colorado and other states. 
Um, so within Candy, Gummies Dominate, no matter what state you're in, um, uh, Washington is interesting because Washington technically isn't allowed to sell gummies, but some of their best selling products are not marketed as gummies, but they're technically gummies. Um, so, yeah, gummies, guys. Plus, plus is onto something. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Um, so, in California, we see vape is just out of control. So, I think. <laughs> That's also really interesting, right? Since this isn't a medical market yet, and vape seems to be a very much adult use play in the other states. Um, what this tells me is that even though we aren't currently in a medical market yet, or sorry, aren't currently in adult use market yet, the California medical market behaves in many ways like an adult use market. As in a lot of our consumers aren't necessarily medical consumers. <laughs> what? Well, how I consider everybody a medical consumer. That's not my opinion, but um, you know, the general populace. All right, <laughs> so um, yeah, this is just fun, right? Like, look how massive California's vape market is, and this doesn't include, again, adult use sales, right? So you're comparing um, Colorado, Washington, Oregon's adult use, well, this is total sales, including their adult use sales, and this is just California's medical vape market. So 2018, again, this, that bar is just gonna be, it's gonna, you won't even see the other states. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about pre-rolls. Um, infused pre-rolls, guys. In California, we love our tarantulas. Um, if, you guys, if you guys aren't familiar with those, um, they do make up the majority of that 30% uh, infused products, um, especially since they retail at like 20 bucks each. Consumers are willing to pay for those. So if you're in the pre-roll game, um, think about infused products as a potential growth market. Um, so uh, let's talk about um, top brands. So I'm not going to list the top brands for you, but I am going to tell you that in this industry we still see a huge dominance by top brands, right? Which is expected in the beginning and potentially also down the line. But um, what is interesting here is that Colorado and Oregon show way higher concentrates, uh, concentrations of the top five brands. And, um, and Washington, Washington's a weird one. I mean, the entire brand landscape there is just very controlled um, and a lot more regulated than the other states, but California, what this tells me is that there's still a huge amount of uh, development for not top five brands to still get into the top five. Um, and similar, uh, similar argument for edibles, um, we're seeing that in you know the others in the legal states, Colorado, Washington, Oregon, um, uh, the top five brands already make up roughly half of uh, all sales, and California is at 33 percent, so. We can expect to see that number climb as well. So some product trends. Um, we've talked about gummies a lot, and, uh, and oh crap, what just happened? Oh no. Okay, hang on. Let's let's we'll play this game together, guys. <laughs> We're gonna have to talk through it. Is everybody having fun? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woo! Okay. <laughs> so gummies, yay! All right. So I uh, have plus there. Just, you know who does. Um, uh, and <laughs> um, you see also high-end vapes is a huge, um, uh, we all know, you know, the taxes of the world are, uh, are crushing it. Um, uh, pills and tablets, that's a huge growth segment. Um, low dosing, guys, microdosing, that's going to be one of, the top, one of the top trends of 2018, in my opinion. But, um, and then pet products, that's, that's been a, one of the highest growth categories as well. Given, granted that it's been growing from a tiny, tiny... Um, from a tiny dollar value, but still growing really fast. Um, so looking at Colorado, uh, since I can't list for you guys the exact top brands or top products, um, I've included a few in a sort of image-based bucket. Um, but here's your top Colorado uh, brands and products of 2017. Um, so you have your Wana uh, gummies and your Americana, your Americana gummies. Again, Chiba Chews gummies, these are all so the top products in Colorado at the moment, pills, um, mints, chocolates. Um, in California, top edibles, brands, and products. Does anything surprise you guys here? No, it's tree well, it's best cookie dough or Kuroba, which one? Best cookie dough. Yeah. Yeah, that's not, I mean, that's not gonna be there. Um, <laughs> but uh, in 2018. But yeah, again, it seems like it's a big trend. Well, except for. <laughs> but yeah, Kiva products generally, microdose, 
tinctures. All right. And uh, top strains. So this is always a fun one. Uh, Blue Dream is number one or two in every single state, and by far. Um, people are generally pretty entertained by that. Uh, one of the reasons why is it's a high yield, uh, relatively easy strain to grow, and it's uh, probably one of the lesser intimidating strains to the new adult use consumer. So when we saw adult use legalized in the other states, Blue Dream spiked to number one. Um, and in California, you see, oh shoot, I should have said, yeah, I did say California. Um, and even in California, again, which is a medical market, Blue Dream is number one. So how do people feel about cannabis? Um, this is actually not from our data. This is a Gallup poll that was recently released and I wanted to include it because it shows that 64% of Americans support full-scale legalization. Um, that's massive. I mean, 64% of Americans believe that we should all have access to cannabis um, in one way or another. And that is not a number to be ignored. Now this is from our consumer survey. Um, this is uh, uh, Colorado, Washington, Oregon, and California combined. Am I good in two minutes? Oh man, I'm not close. Um, okay, so, uh, so it shows us that 95% support some form of legalization, 80% agree marijuana has medical benefits, California itself tracks behind the national average, 93% agree there should be some form of legal marijuana use, um, and even among the rejectors, and that's what we call, um, uh, that's what we call our, uh, you know, people who um, aren't necessarily against it, but won't consume it themselves, even among those, 70% agree that cannabis should be legal. So who are the current and future cannabis consumers? This is what people imagine when they think of cannabis, right? They imagine your traditional stoner stereotype, which is fine. Um, but what the data actually shows, and I'll get to that in two seconds um, before we, we dig into the, uh, into the consumer themselves. 23% um, of Californians are current consumers. Um, we define current consumers as people who have consumed cannabis in the last six months. Um, what is interesting about this is this, okay, so you can't see it. This is the 23% consumers. This is um, the acceptors bucket, and that's people who would consider consuming cannabis um, in the future or you know, are open to it. Um, that number is 38%. So 38% of adults over 21 in 2018 are likely to walk into dispensaries. That's an insane number. Give pressure, yeah. Okay, so who are the California cannabis consumers? Well, um, the, the average California cannabis consumer is actually an adult male um, in their 40s, or early, late 39, 40, whatever. Um, they work full, I did it again. I keep clicking the wrong button, ah. Okay, um, uh, they, I'll do this while I, uh, um, okay, they, I'll, I'll give you the gist, but the average California cannabis consumer actually has a higher salary, more likely to hold a, hold a full-time job, um, have a family, kids under 10, uh, than the average non-consumer. Um, so that's, I think, definitely contradictory to what the stoner stereotype propagates. Um, and this is powerful information that we should all go around and share because we are an awesome industry full of awesome people. Okay, and uh, so yeah, when we say cannabis consumers are happy campers, um, <laughs> so yeah, like you see, they're just better people. Higher salary, higher... <laughs> higher level of education, <laughs> you name it, than the average non-consumer. All right, so where, how, and why are Californians consuming? Uh, almost 60% are shopping in the dispensary. Um, and why? The majority for recreational and social, or health and medical, um, but about 30% consume for both medical and recreational purposes, which is where I say, you know, I think all consumers are medical consumers. Um, there we go. All right, and when? <coughs> Mostly in the evening, um, and mostly as a solo experience. I'm almost done, I promise. Um, what do California consumers want? 73% prefer inhalables, um, which is actually a higher ratio than Colorado because their edible and, uh, well, their edible market is significantly more involved. Um, and what California women want, they actually uh, prefer inhalables less than the average um, user. So they tend to move to, towards the, uh, uh, they tend to have a preference towards edibles, right? It's easily dosable, it's less intimidating than consuming. Um, these are all factors we have to consider, right, when we're um, approaching the new adult user, the new adult user in 2018. So seeing you know, less intimidating products, if you will. Um, so finishing up here at the retail experience. Um, so when, when consumers think of dispensaries, this is what they think about. 
or at least my friends and family. <laughs> um, and uh, no, we all know reality, that's not what dispensaries look like. They are a hell of a lot nicer, not all, but a lot. Um, and actually the consumers do care about their purchasing experience. And what's interesting is the top five reasons have nothing to do with price, right? It's professional staff, trustworthiness, the butt tenders, uh, provide them with uh, good information. You don't get until price until the sixth um, reason why they shop in dispensaries. So again, that shows you that the consumer is looking for an experience, right? So, um, recapping, future cannabis is bright. We're gonna see products in the, and brands continue to evolve, um, especially as acceptance and normalization um, increases, as we see through the Gallup poll and many other um, research sources. Um, our new consumer demographic, uh, or our new segments are emerging that will, uh, will force us to evolve with other brands and categories. And, um, uh, yeah, same thing, more low, you know, more interesting brands and dosing variations, packaging variations, a higher level of sophistication. Um, consumers like convenient, discreet, and approachable products, right? We saw that with, uh, with our new uh, demographics coming about. And um, the retail experience is going to continue to uh, drive a lot of the consumer behavior. And that's it. So if you want more information, feel free to come and talk to us um, or download the free book or the free executive report that we, um, that we make available online that's a, for the ArcView book. John's right here, that's why I keep pointing at him when I talk about ArcView. I'm like, ArcView, ArcView. Um, and, and that's it. So uh, thank you. Well, that was awesome. Thank you so much.